The National Security Agency, NSA, has cleared personnel in all three services identified at, and they're identified as security groups. The naval security groups were identified as communication technicians, CTs. Secrecy and clearances are an absolute ne necessity. CTs were never permitted to discuss their activities even with the remainder of the crew. Their skills included electronic repair, cryptographic repair, signal specialists with Morse code skills, linguists, communicators, and yeomen. There are over 100 CTs on board the Liberty. The USS Liberty, AGTR-5, was controlled primarily by the, by the NSA. The ship was a World War II victory cargo ship, was one of the most advanced intelligence ships of the line. The USS Liberty had traditional American markings on our bow, GTR-5, as some of these pictures show, and on our stern, the back end of the ship, USS Liberty, big letters, and flying a large American flag. Please remember that. As far as the view of the ship, it was so unmistakable. It was antennas of all sorts, from stem to stern, long wire, whips, yaggies, um, conical, I forget the names of them, uh, dishes. Um, we had a huge 16-foot dish uh, that, point, point, that pointed skyward when not in use on a pedestal. If you miss that antenna, you had to be blind. CT intercept area within the ship was approximately amidships, below the main deck, and an enclosed and denied area to the remainder of crew. And that's another important point that I want to emphasize. We were, we were like a sealed area that normally no one could, could walk through, uh, passageways, or it was a contained area, um, sealed off from the rest of the ship with only uh, one door and an emergency hatch, okay? The CTs on board the ship were required never to talk about what we did. As a radio man aboard the United States ship Liberty, prior, prior to and after that duty, I was cleared in some of the aspects that these gentlemen perform below decks, but not to the high degree of security. We would turn around and we would associate that with them. I, I actually lived in the same birthing quarters with them. And we'd sit and play cards, but hey, what'd you do? Nothing. And he snored. <laughs> you couldn't get a word out of these guys as to what was going on down in the spaces. I was walking past the hatch, the door he was talking about, and that's all it is. It's just from here to the table was a wall, and then there was a hatch that went downstairs. That's all you saw. And you could not get a word out of him what was down there other than a bowling alley <laughs> and a swimming pool. As a, ra as a radio man in support of the USS Liberty, I'd set up the transmitters on a frequency that they requested. I made sure the transmitter was operating in 100 percent efficiency at all times. We made sure the antennas, we made sure all the couplings to the antennas were operational because this was 24-7, 365 operations with these gentlemen. The Trescom antenna that he's talking about is 16 feet wide, 32 feet high on top of the pedestal, a satellite dish antenna, which was used to bounce signals off the moon back to the United States in high-speed communications. We took care of that. Boy, it gets to you. Our orders located us in an operating area off of Port Said, Egypt. We arrived off the coast of Sinai, June 7, 1967, and the weather was beautiful, sunny day, with the light breeze.
During our journey, we became aware of the, of the serious trouble that was brewing between the Arabs and Israel, and Israel. As a matter of fact, we received word that a war started on June 5th. Israel had completely wiped out the air forces of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Our approach to Port Said had us sailing parallel to the Sinai Peninsula, which now Israel occupied. Our skipper, Commander William McGonagall, was concerned about the situation and had our Ford 50 caliber gun mounts constantly manned, and they wore combat helmets and flak jackets. In addition, we observed darkened ship at night, which is very, very unusual. This was, um, it all made us, I think, a bit nervous. He sent a message to Vice Admiral Martin in London and requested a destroyer escort. We were advised that since we were flying an American flag ensign and sailing in international waters, no one would dare attack us. Let me continue. Yes, please. Okay. So June, June 8th, 1967, in the morning. For me, it was business as usual, electronic repair and general quarter drills. I was assigned to radio, radio research room two within the CT area. This room was both my repair responsibility and my general quarters location. General quarters is a term that the Navy uses to cause people to go to certain locations when there's a, 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 a an emergency or a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a unique situation, a battle situation. Um, and it was, it was um, kind of nice to have both my normal re repair spawn, the area that I normally worked and my general quarters position at the same location, and I'll explain that later. So I, I started my day with a couple of unimportant, uh, unimportant units which needed my attention. However, during the morning, there were 12 overflights of his air, Israeli aircraft. On one occasion, I went topside to see for myself. I waved to the Israeli pilot. He was so close, I could see his face. He waved back in a friendly manner. I mean, the plane was the plane was plainly marked with a Star David, and uh, he waved his wings back and forth. Um, and this happened 12 different times that we logged on in our logbook. So since we were so close to Egypt, it was comforting to know that the Israelis, our ally, were keeping an eye on us. Some of the crew, not me, were sunbathing. Aggressive, we were not. Now, I, I want to go back to that picture that I was starting to paint about the uh, crew sunbathing. Keep in mind that uh, uh, we didn't have any gun mounts other than those four, ca four fifty caliber machine guns, which were nothing more uh, to, than for, for repel borders. You couldn't. I mean, it was a defensive thing for, uh, I mean, you couldn't defend the ship against aircraft or a destroyer or motor torpedo boats. I mean, it just, the, 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 they were just for simple repair, repel borders. The point I'm trying to make is this was a military ship, yes, but it was not an aggressive military ship. We didn't have cannons missile launchers, torpedo launchers. And as I said, when the planes came over, and you, all you could see is antennas from stem to stern, and these people sunbathing, I mean, it was right out of the pages of McHale's Navy. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, as I said, since we, they were Israeli aircraft, we felt comfortable. Anyway, after I went topside, I came back to RR2, and after I repaired the first unit, I was now looking at the second unit, which had been tagged for some time. And repairing the unit, 
that took me to through lunch, which I discovered that a mechanical part was missing.